Hello everyone, let's see what's new in IBM Hyperscale version 5.3. This is the latest release and we'll actually explore some of those new features in both the user experience as well as automation. Let's go to the help section right now, which is the life preserver in the upper right hand side. And if we scroll down, we'll actually see the what's new and tips and let's actually click on it and go into it right now. You'll see it's a nice PDF and let's review it together. As I scroll down, you'll actually see the what's new in section 01. And we also have sections two through five on the right hand side of the page, which actually shows some of the other features you might have missed. For example, the health and best practices, the projection tools, or the commands log, let alone the statistics comparison and the mass configuration functionalities. The new stuff is over on the left hand side and let's review that right now. As we scroll down, the first item is support for the latest 425 model. Now the earlier model of the A9000 was the 415 or 415 model. The 425 actually has twice if not thrice the capacity and density of the 415 for the same price and same if not better performance. As you can see on the left hand side, you can actually see the same information we just talked about. Now let's scroll down and take a look at our next big enhancement. We now have what's called a snapshot scheduler inside the Hyperscale Manager. This will allow you to take snapshots automatically and as well as retention all from the Hyperscale Manager. So without using scripts or external tools, you now can do it inside the Hyperscale Manager. And as you can see, it actually has a time interval. And we talk about this more in other videos that are available on the IBM YouTube channel. Take a look now at the flexible layout section. We now allow a lot of functionality inside both the inspector and the table. You'll see the arrows, which actually allow you to resize both of these elements so that you can have more or less screen real estate based on your preferences. Now let's scroll down to another great enhancement. This is where we've actually broken up into four separate areas for hosts. So as you can see on the left hand side, we've outlined this a little bit. This allows you to find out a lot more about how the host is communicating with an A9000 or XIV. So in the upper left, you can see how each particular host will now map to which particular module and which particular ports, as well as if the multi-pathing with the green checkbox is working properly. This is also available as a report that you can click on right from the GUI itself. On the upper right, you actually see how we have the SCSI ports as well as the fiber channel ports available in a nice table configuration as well as report generation across all of your hosts. In the lower left, you can actually filter this report or actually search for hosts based on their iSCSI name, their IP address, as well as the worldwide name. Take a look in the lower right. You actually see that the health and best practices has been improved with all of this so that we will actually alert you if the host connectivity is not within best practices, as well as for passwords for the Hyperscale Manager. As you scroll down, we also have enhanced our proactive support. So as you can see on the left hand side, the XRSC for the XIV Remote Support Connection allows us to do even more advanced functionality for you so that in case there's any severe conditions, we'll immediately open the tunnel so that IBM support representatives can immediately start diagnosing all of the logs automatically even if you're not at the console or connected to the A9000 itself. The next is we actually have improved our wildcards and our searching and our type ahead navigation. We've now added the star for any character, as you can see on the left-hand side here, as well as added the comma for an OR command. So for example, you can see that I have EX with any character before or after it, or with the comma there, or RAC with the star before and after. So we'll find anything with Oracle or EX with characters on either side with the OR for either of those operands. If we scroll down, we can actually see that we've enhanced our management server functionality so that we can actually restart the management server as well as observe the latency from the client to the server itself. And as you see here again is our restart service in case you'd like to explore that. Let's talk also about how we've done some automation with minimal efforts. So in this case, when you've selected a series of objects, systems, volumes, hosts, anything inside the hyperscale manager, with a right click or going to the actions, we can actually do multiple things all to those objects, like changing the role or changing the phase of a proxy. And all this can be done with a lot less effort. And as you can see down below, we can create multiple volumes, clusters, 
or even snapshots. And as we scroll down now, let's review some of the other items that we introduced in earlier versions of the Hyperscale Manager. Here's our health and best practices. This is our dashboard so that we have tool tips and tips to make sure that your environment is as in the best practice as possible. And if it changes, we'll absolutely let you know. And you can change all of these with the gear icon in the center. When we're talking about learning your habits, we'll actually customize the Hyperscale Manager based on your user ID to the things you've done often. If you keep on looking for a particular system or volumes, we'll remember those searches and suggest them to you. In Reclaimable Capacity, we'll actually show you when volumes aren't being used and we'll allow you to jump right to them so that you can actually reappropriate them or reach out to those departments directly. In Commands Log, we're able to now look at every command you've done inside the GUI and make sure the equivalent XCLI command or the command line log is available for you so you can actually clear what you're seeing or actually send it to a CSV or copy and paste from your actual clipboard. In our capacity growth analytics, we'll actually take a look at how the pools and volumes are being used and actually generate a report. And we can actually change those columns as well as thresholds that you set so that you can actually see when things might actually fill up. This is great for your upper management. As part of that, we can actually do more projection with projection tools. So under that particular section of the Hyperscale Manager, you can actually look at what your estimation for dedupe or reduction ratios are, and then it will actually adjust for those forecasts we just talked about. This is also very important if you want to be very conservative with your projection estimates. Now let's take a look at the efficiency. So in the lower left, we've actually made this easier to read and simpler for everyone to diagnose and look at how you're using the system. We've also improved the watching and auditing screens. Now in performance, we've made it very easy for you to compare multiple different charts at the same time using tooltips and pinning things together. We've also updated the current performance so that you can actually take a look at all those different metrics over an entire year using the historic latency or historic bandwidth. If we scroll down, we can actually see some of the other functions that we talked about earlier. And yes, you can look at this PDF and review it as you see fit. Thanks again for watching this video. We look forward to seeing you soon.